court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Why am I here again? <laughs> Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You've seen it before! That's right. It's only natural that the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secrets? All right. Why? Why does she... Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At its center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. So this figurine! It's a container of sorts, is it? Yes, looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is a su this is superb craftsmanship. Oh, yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. It looks like there really was something to that bear after all. So, uh, can you open it for us? Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. Oh, wait. I need to press things. Hold on. Go back. Puzzle? That's right. I'm right. But it looks like... It looks like an ordinary figurine. True enough. To people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. So you can take it apart. And how would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right, and then push it in. Oh, yes, I see! After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh, this is most interesting. <laughs> A boy and his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. See, what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? At its center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this... this was a present from you! That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for one. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland. So I doubt there are many people with this same bear in this country. But this looks like it can be easily broken. Especially if someone wanted to get out what's inside. Well, it's a toy. But it can never be the same again once it's been broken. You really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container, or jewelry box? I never told anyone. And as long as Juan never told anyone either, then only the two of us knew. 
The two of you, huh? Then, of course, that means... Mr. Ingard didn't know, right? Perhaps. I think this is about all I'm going to get for now. Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realize that there's one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. The spare is actually a jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we've agreed to this point, there's only one logical question that can come next, and that is this. What is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next. Witness. Yes? You're the only one who can open this. Please. There's a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is that? It looks like a note. I don't think we need to guess at what that is, do we, Mr. Wright? It's the suicide note. The suicide note? The suicide note left by Juan Carita's former manager, Celeste Impacts. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts. But just as we suspected it was hidden, hidden by the victim, Juan Carita himself. It seems Celeste Impacts had a very beautiful handwriting. And she just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Was it a... Wasn't Adrian Andrews looking for this note? I think. Why isn't she, like... Glad to have found it? And she already knew... She already knew how to take apart the bear, so wouldn't she have already known it was there? That's weird. Order! Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But I couldn't find it anywhere. Because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Edward's pace. So now that the suicide note has been found, What's the next logical question? What's written on the note? That's right. At least that's what I would think. Now then, I believe it is only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. Oh, right, she didn't want to find it, like, to read it necessarily. She wanted to find it to keep it from being read. And I was going to burn it for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. Very well. <laughs> the judge's voice rang loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In her note, Celestin Pax left us to us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and then thrown away by Ingard. About being engaged to Karita and in guard's role in destroying that. And about how she decided in her despair to end it all. And that's all Miss Impacts had to say. There's one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. Ingard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post-ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. 
My word. Madam Guard's values above all else. His refreshing like a spring breeze image. Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. Tells of Guard's horrible misdeeds. It's in Guard's fault that woman killed herself. In this time, oh, a selfish person. I guess there are slime ball lawyers out there who will defend these creeps too. There's no room for doubt here. Mr. D. Killer's client's goal was to obtain this suicide note. And the only person who needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. It seems that we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Er, how am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Gumshoe isn't called yet, so you know what you must do. I know. I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay. There are two deadly pieces of evidence. The figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of this situation through one of those. The gavel is already in the judge's hand. Phoenix, hurry! The suicide note or the figurine? Which one of these should I pursue? Oh yeah, this is going to get me finished right quick. Okay. Okay, so apparently it actually doesn't matter which one of these we choose in our, you know, course of trying to waste time. Alright, so let's suicide note. Please wait, Your Honor. Oh my god, this lawyer again. Oh man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it? It's like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. I think Your Honor believes that Mountain Guard killed in order to obtain this note. Yes, that's correct. But that seems a little strange. In fact, I think there's a contradiction here. This note was hidden by Mr. Karita until the night of the murder. If that's the case, I say that Matt and Guard could not have written or known what was written on this note. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly, but I did think it that way, and I, I thought, it, thought it that way was rather strange. No one in their right mind would kill for a note without first knowing what it said. Order! 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 You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edsworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Huh? The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It's a very small video camera, Your Honor. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? Have you been spying on me, Edgeworth? What the... I thought that spy camera was in my possession. Mountain Guard and the victim both thought of the other as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. And the victim, Juan Carita, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Mr. In Guard. Order! Order! Ahem, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You! Don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you are confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuffed bear's eye. This camera that I have is not, the, is not that same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this, 
Gumshoe's Bug Sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Not in God's fingerprints were on there. Well, Phoenix, it looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Engard learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey, now what's that lawyer thinking? Mommy, is that man the bad killer guy? Why, wait. Are you allowed to have kids in a trial? Like, you know, that are in the, uh, the jury? Are these people just bringing kids with them? I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to do that. Phoenix. Yes, Chief? Yeah, you brought kids in here and we're talking about, like, murder. Have you figured out what you're going to do next? What I'm going to do next? Just running away like a frightened child work? I know it seems like Mr. Edgeworth is very close to putting a lid on this case. But, in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? There's a piece of evidence that he really should investigate. Something you should investigate. I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded for not remembering to look into the item when he had the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? All right, I think this time we finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? Of course I do. What is this piece of evidence that Mia's talking about? Can I figure out what it is that still needs to be looked at? Or should I let it go? Of course. I have an objection, Your Honor. Of course you do, Phoenix. Of course you do. Hmm. That was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Objection! Your Honor, how about that one? The defense has no intention of letting this go so easily. You're beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. Uh-oh. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? So you're telling me that I forgot something? You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. But there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. So apparently, uh, this one's also going to be Celeste's suicide note. That is Miss Impact's suicide note, right? Hmm. Who knows? I mean, sure, this suicide note was found in this bear. But this bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note is yet to be analyzed. Oh! So... As to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impacts or not. That is yet to be even remotely confirmed. Mr. Wright! You can't seriously... Mr. Wright! You! Are you saying the suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews, you are the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. Engard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into this bear? How dare you! Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There's no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve the puzzle is the witness herself. Ah! <laughs> nice glasses. Miss Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Mountain Guard. I... I did no such thing! Right, 
If you're going to pronounce this suicide note as a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented this scrap of paper as evidence. That means that the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution, while the burden of proof that, that they bring up after all this time, where not only do I have to prove that... I, the only way to prove that my client is innocent is to prove that someone else is guilty. I find that hilarious that they bring up the burden of proof here. Okay. <laughs> That's enough. Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on this suicide note? It is as the defense has stated. The handwriting is yet to be analyzed. If that's the case, it seems that yet again we've reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Imposs. It's impossible. This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate. Handwriting analyze, analyze, fine, but this lawyer is trying to buy more time and guards guilty. Look, any idiot can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty, 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 order! Order in the court! You're all being suspended from, uh, being a part of the jury! What is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello, Gumshoe! Marsh Marsh! <sighs> what is with him? And what's with that sigh? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He, uh... He got away. What? I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there was some way to make it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout, pal. But the two of them were already gone. This is terrible. I'm going to keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry. I just need a little more time. But don't tell me. We don't. We don't have any more. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to do this in a jury. Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. Wright, I can't for us to come this far and... Oh, well, what is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, I can't do that. Pretty sure we're not even allowed to talk on a phone <laughs> in the court. Mr. Wright, would you please get a hold of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch! Take that! <laughs> take that! <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth? Please, you've got to buy us some more time. Court is in session. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying? Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I am reluctant to do this. However, it appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. I... this time, I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Objection! Objection! There we go. I figured. Phoenix immediately lifts his head. He knew it was going to happen. Please wait, Your Honor. Edgeworth? Oh, what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I humbly request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary test in this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. But can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I, I'm really hungry right now. I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourned for today and then reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes. Please, Your Honor. That's all I'm asking for. Please, Your Honor. 
very well. I'm sure I can head down to the McDonald's in 30 minutes. <laughs> At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30-minute recess. But be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. I've got to go get my chicken nuggets. Right. Well, what's going on with Maya's situation? The killer. It looks like he got away again. 30 minutes? We can't find her in that time. Ugh. Marsh. Report. Uh, uh, is that Mr. Edgeworth? We don't have time to spit it out. Right. It looks like we just missed them, sir. The killer left a few things behind by accident in his rush to get away. A few things? Can we use any of them as evidence? Ho, ho, ho! I thought you'd ask, pal! I've got the things you left with me right now, and I'm on my way over! Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. When those guys weren't looking, I swiped the stuff and ran. What? Well, I'm not a de detective anymore, so I had to... I'm really sorry, sir, but I've got to put the law on hold for now. Sounds bad. I hope he doesn't get in too much trouble over this. With my hunk of junk car, I'd say I'll be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry. I'll be there. Wait for me. All right. Just get here in one piece. I'm on a mission and no one can stop me now, sir. No one. I'm pulling out all the stops and running every red light. Items left by the murderer, huh? Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. Did he crash into the building? Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me! No one can stop me. Maybe that's why people don't run red lights. What happened? Sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. What was he thinking? We've got to hurry and call for help. We have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, if we don't get to those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No, we can't let that happen. Well, if there's a way we can find out where he is, and we can stand a chance. I would say let's head to the very big circus and see if we run into a car along the way. And as far as I know, Edgeworth's got like a cool car, right? At least in the in the anime, he's got a cool car. So I bet he could like I bet he could drive real fast. Oh, why did Gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there any way to find out exactly where he is at this moment? There's a way. That's right. There's a way. What? How? I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshoe is through this. Uh... 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 I don't know. Can we call the, the killer? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna look this one up too. I don't think we're gonna get negative points on this necessarily, but... <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't actually think about this. This is pretty funny. Francesca von Karma. Why are you bringing up Francesca at a time like... Oh, I see. I'll try to get in contact with her. The chances are slim, but she's all we have. Francesca, will she even want to help us? Edgeworth, what is it? Okay, so I guess he's not going to tell. I thought he was going to explain it. Because Francesca von Karma has a tracking device for Gumshoe, if you remember. 
I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty. But what I'm doing now, I'm pinning the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say, Defense Attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right. It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict? Is Prosecutor Edgeworth here? Yes, Bailiff. It's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. They're probably finished with the handwriting analysis. I have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do. To be continued! Ho ho! Alright. So, it looks like all we have left after this is one more trial section, and I think we're done with this game. Um, let's see. Okay, yes, yeah, so back to the top. Oh, loud noises! I'm trying to decide if I want to, um, if I want to continue or not. Like, I'm going to cut this video here, of course. But, uh, if I want to keep going. Um, but for now, we're going to stop. Um, I will think about this. I think I need to get something to eat, but I'll think about this and decide if I want to keep going. We, if, if I do, I'll probably end up releasing it all on the same day. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for some more Ace Attorney Justice for All. Bye!